Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, mm -hmm. Stanley. I know y'all probably said, I know they not uh -huh. sitting here I fitting can't believe they to back. review yeah, we Love back. and Marriage Huntsville. We because back. we talk cash money skit. <laughs> and we was like, we're never going to do this show again because we don't like what the show has become. And we are still on that sentiment. But. Hey. Sometimes you just got to do what needs to be done. Y'all been in the DMs talking about some, listen, yeah. if y'all don't ever do one or two things for us, can y'all please come back to Love and Marriage Huntsville and uh -huh. can y'all please do the have and the have nots. So we decided to grant one wish. Yeah, and do the love. Yeah, love <laughs> and Because we're not doing that all the way. <laughs> we're not doing another one at all. But listen, a lot has changed since the last time yeah, we talked. Yeah, man, yeah. See, this is why it's important to have your post notifications on because you just never know when random TV reviews will randomly pop up with right. a new review. Because we'll surprise you now. Like we told y'all. <laughs> We love doing these shows, but these shows are definitely a paying hobby for us. So when we get sick and tired of it, we just sit it down. Right. And then when we feel like picking it back up, that's exactly what we do. But look, y'all, yeah. I don't left, no cut all my yeah. hair off, no uh, got locks. Yeah, I got them sister locks going. Yeah. He, he done decided that he's just going to embrace. I'll let the great show, man. I would, I, I'm sick of dying it. So, you know. Yeah, so so we on some. We've been in quarantine, and, yo. And, and then you said, you know. Y'all, y'all find it sexy. I think with, it's sexy, y'all. Y'all let me know in, sexy, the, um, yeah. in the comments if y'all like it or not. But if y'all don't like it, it don't matter. Yeah, that's all good. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and give y'all a disclaimer. We've been in quarantine like the rest of y'all, and we picked up cussing a little bit. So if it <laughs> slips out <laughs> yeah. doing this, YouTube gonna hit my money real good, but we not gonna cut it. But yeah. anyway, let's get right into this episode, season three, episode one. Sisters, Sisters in, Brawl. in Brawl. And I said, okay. I did not follow last season, but I followed the reviews from Bondi and somebody else did really good reviews on. I can't think of who it is, but Bondi Blue, I definitely kept up with her um, recaps because I wanted to kind of keep up with the show. Um, so if you're not watching her, you should be. If you're over here, I definitely know you know of her. Right. So, and she looks great. Congratulations, yeah, Bondi. Yeah, she do. Um, so we see that the Scott brothers are over there at Scott Manor. From what I'm understanding is that they have this big bulk of land and they are deciding that they want to build houses on the land for each family. Right. That is actually my dream. Like I've always said I wanted to have enough land that I can have my family close enough but far away <laughs> <laughs> so that we all are in our perspective places but when we need to be there for each other, when things get crunk, we there as well. Right. So, But it seems as if Kimmy ain't feeling none of that. And I get it. Right. I really do get it. As an introvert myself, like I said, I want you close enough, but I need you far enough away that you, I feel like you well, have easy access to me. Yeah. Well, you have to ring the doorbell. Yeah. Or you got to come through <laughs> the gate to see me because that's not my personality. I don't have that to give. Yeah, because like where I'm from, people don't call you and let you know show that up. they're coming over. They just show up and just knock on the door. And anybody got yeah. time for that. Yeah. <laughs> so... We got that part out the way. I thought we were on a sponsorship for the Ford Edge, but maybe we weren't because they showed a lot of that Ford Edge getting yeah. stuck and <laughs> unstuck in the mud, but maybe we weren't. And, but, and also, y'all know good and well that that Ford was not going up that god darn slippery slope. So that's how we know it was a sponsorship. It had to be some kind of sponsorship. I think. All them trucks with all that power trucks y'all got. Them, them pick well, they trucks. wasn't driving it. It was that guy. I can't remember his name. Um, It doesn't matter. Um, But he, they got the trucks for that. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, within this conversation, uh, Maurice and Marceau up there talking on the land. And they're kind of discussing a little bit about, okay, you need to get your lady on board with wanting to even move up here. Because why are you up here acting like we get ready to do something? And your, la your old lady ain't even trying to be up here with us. And then Marceau <laughs> was saying that, you know, I could get on board with a plan if Letitia would stop changing Change the, plan, the plans. <laughs> because I can't go with that plan because by the time we start implementing that plan, that plan is going to change as well. Welcome to being married to a female. Right. Myself. I already say, I, uh -huh. I know. We don't know what we want. Hey, bro, we want I it. feel your pain. Be careful. Because y'all be 100% on board with a certain plan and read the last minute. You know what? I think I want to change that. And be like, and we have that right. It's like, okay. We have that right. This is change number 199. But it's cool. So, it's really not. <laughs> <laughs> so, within the conversation, right, we had Maurice and Marso discussing the fact that, hey, did you catch your boy over there, old Steve Harvey? <laughs> In the strawberry letter. In the strawberry letter. Marso said, said strawberry, strawberry letter. letter. 
Like what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? hell? He looked. He looked like what the hell is a, a strawberry letter? letter. <laughs> it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. But I was with Marceau on this one. He knows how to sincerely apologize in the moment, mm -hmm. but without saying, with saying, he knows how to capitalize on the moment as much as he possibly can when it's not even necessary. And like he said, the best apology is change behavior. That is, that is so true. And that is so freaking true. That is so true. Like if true. you are sincerely <clears throat> sorry for what you did, apologize and do what you need to do as a father because you right. no longer have the privilege of being this woman's husband. Right. Now just become the best father and the best co-parent that you could ever be for those children and move the buck on. Yep. So that's why I got to stop being moved by tears a long time ago. Hello. Because people will break down and cry and apologize. I'm so sorry. And I ain't going to do it no more. Shoot. Hey, people soon think I'm heartless because I just soon, look at you like... Soon as it blow over, they repeating the same behavior. Um, yep. And you got to ask yourself, how long are you going to put up with it? That's it. <laughs> so then we over there at Melody's house and Des Destiny. Destiny. That's her name, right? Yeah, Destiny. Destiny comes over there to visit Melody mm -hmm. and they're just chatting it up. And at this point, Melody is officially divorced from Martell. And she's letting Destiny know, like, listen, at this moment in my life and at this point in my life, Melody Holt is just trying to deal with being Melody Holt. Like no, I can not, appreciate that. I can appreciate. I'm that. trying to tell you, like yeah, I can appreciate. I always, that. I'm always concerned when people are like in the middle of a divorce or they're in the middle of a separation and they start to start they dating jump, and yeah, things like that. Relationship. Because yeah. real talk, I think that that year is designed for you to really just settle into yourself. Yeah. And to figure yourself. Out. Exactly. It ain't nothing wrong with just being with yourself, by yourself, figuring life out. Because real talk, you may change within that year of who you are mm -hmm. to be with whatever it is that you're going to be with next. You know, yep. it doesn't. Yeah. So I like what she said. I'm trying to be with me. I'm trying to do me. But she's trying to get laid in so many words, too. And that's all can be, you know, that can be yeah, situated can be as well. Don't look, don't nobody care no more. But it, but like you we, can get somebody for that. Yeah, we appreciate it. We talk about it all the time how, you know, in life there is no handbook for marriage. You, yeah, sure you kind of get into it and you just see, you know, different marriages that you saw growing up or in your Either family. You want to be friends. like them or you don't. Yeah. So you kind of use that blueprint. And so you got a lot of us getting into marriages and don't know how to be a husband and don't know how to be a wife and we just try to be you're figuring it out yeah you're trying to figure it out and then the unfortunate part is people who haven't figured it out enough end up like mel and martell which you know i i never ever would kick nobody while they down when it come down to divorce because that's a hard thing yeah, especially when so kids hard. are involved so i don't know like where their kids are at this point but I do love it that Mel didn't jump into a relationship because sometimes we think that another late relationship is going to fix the hurt from the previous relationship. Or my but, sign that I'm moving on. Right. But it doesn't. You know, you just take that. that I was just ready to cuss. <laughs> you take that skit from the previous thing and you put it on the other person. So that person wondering why in the hell am I, who is this person I'm dealing with now because you took the baggage from the old thing and brought it over so I can appreciate you, Mel, trying to figure yourself out. Hello. Yeah. All right, but in the midst of this, this conversation, <laughs> she figured something else out. Yeah. Destiny laid it on her that, hey, while we're in the middle of finding ourselves and being with ourselves and creating this new normal, you know I'm officially divorced, right? Mel was yeah. like, what? wait, but, wait, what? But I was wondering what the heck was going on when, when they were showing the credits and, and, and I seen her, but I ain't see LeBerg. And I was like, is that his name? Is it LeBerg? Yeah. Yeah, LeBerg. I was like, where the heck is LeBerg? Yeah. Well, they're divorced, y'all. And here is where Mel always lose me. And some of y'all can't get why I can't really... I give Mel her flowers when she's due her flowers, but I also... I can flip on Mel so quickly because Mel often forgets how she's done. How she operates. In previous scenes. Mm -hmm. So, season one, when her mm -hmm. and Martell's issues first landed on the scene, mm -hmm. her thing with her friends were, none of y'all checked on me, none of y'all did this, none of y'all did that. And all of them were like, 
you didn't let us in. Yeah. Yeah. Like you never told us what was going on. So you're over there suffering in silence, but you want us to know that you're suffering in silence, but you're never telling us. And when we do check on you, you tell us that everything is okay. So she's now upset with Destiny because she's mad that Destiny didn't, didn't do mm -hmm. exactly what you didn't do right. with your friends <clears throat> in season one. So it does feel a whole lot differently when the shoe is actually on, on, on your foot. Right. So Destiny was like, and I like, I like Destiny's vibe for this reason. Destiny kind of operates like I do. If I got a lot going on and I know my friends have a lot going on, I'm not going throw to throw yeah. that on you as well. Yeah. Like I'm not going to load the wheelbarrow up. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I got this. I can, I can handle what I got going on, but I don't know if you can handle my stuff and your stuff at the same time. So I can be supportive of you and still carry my load yep. at the same time. So I, I get what Destiny was saying. Like, I, I, I got this. Yeah. And like she said, y'all had 10 plus years in the game. I had barely one. So what I had to unload didn't have any kind it of bearing yeah, on what y'all had going yeah, on. Yeah. I got over my skit quickly. So now when people ask me how I'm doing, like I'm really I'm good. good. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're we're doing what we have to do for our son, but real talk, I've processed, I'm really good. <laughs> yeah, and that was back to like what I was talking to you about yesterday that uh, certain circumstances, I try not to put myself in because, well, certain friends, I don't mm -hmm. like to put certain stuff on those friends because I know that those friends will take it on even if they own. know it, even though they know they can't handle it because they love me so much, mm -hmm. they will take it on and kill themselves. So I would keep it from them. So that's that's how I felt like Destiny was. Yeah. Yeah. Protecting her friend. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? In yeah. the middle of what we going through, we still are, we still compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just crazy. But anyway, <laughs> on to my favorite person, Kim. So we see Kimmy go over there with um, Marceau. Marceau is doing some work and we come to find out that Letitia is in school. She's doing a lot of work in kids school. He's trying to get his health together and whatnot. So Kimmy has been meal prepping for him and bringing it over, blah, 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 blah. Listen, Kimmy, you sure you ain't Haitian girl? <laughs> Because we keep some million jobs at one time. Yeah, because she, she know how to do a little bit of everything. I ain't know she knew how to cater. She's a nurse. A cater. She's, she's a real estate expert. Yeah. She's a caterer. And then he was getting ready to put party plan on as uh -huh. well. Yep. So Marso was over there. His daughter called him because she wanted these potato chips, but she don't know which potato chips she wants. So she said she's going to do some research. She's going to send him a picture of the potato chips. But in the meantime... Kimmy was laying out the meals that he needed to do and what order he needed doing do them in. And he dropped the ball on Kimmy and told <laughs> Kimmy, listen, Kimmy, you know my wife, get ready to graduate and I want to do something special for her. Kimmy said, I know you're not fit. <laughs> I know you're not fit to ask me to plan no party. Uh -uh. And he was like, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to do her birth, I mean, her own graduation party, because I know that you she can was handle like, it. Oh hell she said, no! no. Oh, she said, hell no! Uh -uh. She said, "Her mama know how to cook, like call Wanda." Mark Ma Ma also said, "I don't want no fried pie meat. I don't want. Fried I want some meat. real food." He said, "She cooks with margarine." <laughs> I said, "Marso, don't act like, don't act don't like. Don't forget where you came from, now, Brad. Imperial butter. Uh huh. You know you. And they had that brought us a long way." Matter of fact, her Country mama pop. still use it. <laughs> That's how I rolled off that tongue uh, yeah. so easily because it's it's like ten boxes in my refrigerator. Hey, but well, guess what? We use it every now and then too. And then, then, <laughs> yeah. and then so with curry gold goes low. Uh huh. Imperial is on that. Uh -huh. Heck yeah. <laughs> so Kimmy said, "You know what? What I'm going to do is I will help." I said, "Kimmy, you just volunteer." I knew she was gonna say yeah. I I knew she was gonna say yeah, cause you know Moss Oak can sell it to you, man. Oh, he can. Oh yeah, he, he let yeah, he can sell you. So she said, I'll help out. I'll do some sides. And he, I said okay. And he said he gonna do the meats. And he but I got a feeling the chemical. I said, I got a feeling yeah. the chemical gonna end up doing this whole thing. Watch. Listen, they better church, cause the church gonna do the meats. I'm gonna do, do the, the sides. sides yep. <laughs> Everybody pick a side. What you bring? I'm bringing the greens. What you bring? The macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese, man. Somebody gonna bring the mashed potatoes. Then no, all the, no, then, no, the then all, potatoes. Then all the cheap folk go for the paper plates and 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 and, and, and the napkins. napkins. You know the stuff that yeah. But what they don't know is that add up just as quickly too. Yeah, but ain't not as much as the the real stuff. 
So Kimmy was like, um, so what about Wanda and all this good stuff? This fool <laughs> Marceau said, I'm going to have the party when well, Wanda is out of town. town. <laughs> and I thought that it was a, a joke. joke. I thought it was a joke. A joke <laughs> laced with truth. Because you, know, you never know when he's telling the truth. Because <laughs> he jokes so much. She was really, she was really cool. We're going to put a pin there because we're going to go on water, right? Uh, so we see Martel. Martel pops up. Oh, <laughs> Martel pops up over at Destiny's um, shop, store, hair store, <clears throat> with a box of products. And he's talking to her and she's pretty much on the uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Listen, about that picture that you posted on social media when you were talking about, you know, your daughter get ready to go to school and how you love your children and whatnot. And you just slipped in there that fifth child. And she was like, I think it was in poor taste that you would do something like that. Like you would, you would give this little baby her shining moment, but then you would lace it with my fifth child right up underneath of it. Like... <clears throat> Why would you even do that? And he turned that thing all the way around to say, well, I'm never going to deny any of my kids. Nobody even ever said that. And I don't even think Martell is the type of dude that would ever do that. No. no. But at the same time, give this baby its time as well. Like, you knew that that would get under male skin. Oh, yeah. And it did. And I think it would get under any woman's skin that has been with, that has gone through what they've gone through with him. To have to share that moment with what you brought into our relationship that ultimately caused us to ultimately break up. Right. Yeah. So he acted like he didn't understand, but then he flipped it around and he said, Listen, we about to support black business, right? I got these products over here. I said, <laughs> if he doesn't seem like the dude that come the CD dude that comes around to the bottle shop selling the CDs uh -huh. and the DVDs. I got whatever you need. I got whatever you need. I got the new DMX baby. Uh -huh. I said, what are you doing? So he got a bunch of products that he ain't got no contract for. But <laughs> he over there and, and I knew what he was doing. As soon as he said it, he said, well, I haven't signed the contract yet because my divorce is not finalized yet. Because if he signs that contract before that divorce is finalized, then those funds and whatever it is that he's getting from that contract is now the marital <clears throat> uh, marital business. Right. Which means that she could be do some of that money. So he's trying to secure his bag, but he's trying to do it in a way that, hey, I know he, he been an influencer, y'all. Yeah, basically. <laughs> he, 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 got he, yeah. he got an affiliate link. Yeah. He got an affiliate link. And she was like, no, nah, if you don't get out of my face with that. And he was like, but I'm going to own 20% of it when, in a few weeks. In a few weeks. And she was like, listen. Mm -mm. Basically, come back after the contract is yeah, signed. Because, and maybe we can talk. Because she said right now, you hustling and you, you a brand ambassador but, for free. But let me ask you this question right here. Because Melody and Destiny are best friends and seeing how all this has fell apart and she put her mouth on Martel based upon stuff that has happened from previous episodes. Do you think it's a good idea for her to do business with Martel? You know, it's kind of sticky because their tax bracket is way higher than mine. And I know that when you get to a certain status within your community, there are the pool is smaller okay. of how you're able to deal with business within yourselves. So I don't want to say no, because sometimes we are all we have and we need to keep the personal with the personal and do business the way that we need to do business so that we all can flourish. Um, so that's a hard one because I don't, I don't know how big the running circle is. Like how many more options is it out there to get products such as that? in the hands of other black businesses gotcha. you know what i mean because you can always take them down to to <clears throat> to ming and all of them folk but we, we we trying to we trying to recapture that right uh, back into i our see own. i see where you're going what you're saying but i'm just i'm not gonna go all around the bush <laughs> i'm just gonna say no i don't think they should because it's like too close to home this is mel and her is best friends so if something doesn't go right on the side with her and Montel, that could affect their relationship because you know money always can, not always can have its way of messing up friendships. Oh, it it, it muddles the water now. Right. So I, 
I I don't at least not now. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I'm not saying that you know. It's it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's gonna yeah. be alright. I don't think they should. It's gonna be alright. So uh, over at Mel was. But I can't knock Martel for trying to get his house in order. Man, he got. Got to got to make that he, paper. He got to make that money back. Got a family to feed. Got a family, family to, to feed. feed. Yeah, They're depending on no, me. Yeah. Depending on me. I get it. I get it. Yeah, so yeah. I'm definitely not gonna knock you for that. Yeah, he gonna be selling. Just get that. Just get that guy doing contract sign. Hello. But anyway, <clears throat> so Chris. Y'all remember the 47 acres and a mule? This is how we all got here. Well, yeah, we because still we back were on so that. impressed with these black people. I'm tired of hearing about these 47 acres, man. It's like just do something. Just do something with it. Sell it. Build some houses on it. I don't care. Just do something with it. Sell it to Ryan Holmes or something. Somebody. Somebody. Hey. But um, the 47 acres because of how Mel and Martel have did what they did. They had to sell the 47 acres off to an investor mm -hmm. or investors, right. um, which was Chris people. So Chris comes over there to talk to Mel and he was like, listen, I really would, I really would like you to consider building a couple of houses on the 47 acres because the plan is to turn this land into single family homes. And if you could come out there and build a few of these homes, I think they said the price point was two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Two hundred fifty, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that would be a good look for you, Knight. Like, I would really love to work with you. And I'm like, Chris, are you being messy? Like, yeah, because you know how how Martel loves why you, that. Yeah, yeah. Because real talk, we all know that that Melody was the brains behind the business, and Martel was the doer, the the muscle to the business. Why you go to Martel? Yeah. And it, and I love how Mel put it in check real quick. Like, listen, I would love to do something like that. But have you talked to Martel about it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because real talk, we cool with this and everything was good with the 47 acres. But the 47 acres was really his baby. Yeah. Like, he has so much passion when it comes to this 47 acres that... Bringing me in the midst of it, and you didn't tell him anything about it. I don't a whole want, lot of problems. Yeah, yeah, I don't want no unnecessary fights going on around here. So I think you need to go talk to him mm -hmm. because don't bring me in the middle of. Don't put your church member in this bit here, baby. And I was like, good for you, Mel, because yeah. anybody else would have been like, you know what? I don't give a damn. What he, matter of fact, I would have did those fight. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, no, you need to talk to him about it. That's like, what I actually thought she was gonna do. Is like, you know, this is an opportunity for me to get back. Mm -hmm. But not which I wouldn't have been mad at it either. But anyway, she was like she was gonna, she was gonna protect her peace on this one. I ain't mad at you. Mm -mm. <laughs> so over there, we have Letitia's graduation party, and it was a little kickback, like a nice laid back thing, not too serious, like no formal attire. Like everybody came out with the kids. You know, you had your your um your good cookout outfit no, right, on. So, right, say down to earth black cookout. That's what it was. Off, the yeah. family reunion style. Yeah. So they out there, and everybody's you know gathering around. You got the grill going. You know, you see the um, you see the punch. man. Did y'all see them steaks on that grill? Yeah, Don't talk about that boat. That thick. Yes, Ooh. sir. So, <laughs> <laughs> Kimmy, you a better woman than me. Oh, you a better woman than me, cause I'm telling you the way that I'm set up. You would have went. You would have came, would you? I wouldn't have came, but if I had came, and the first person approached me on some BS, you been gone. I would have been out of there because what? First of all, what I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna show my A out there in public like that. Second of all, you're not gonna punk me. So when I get to the point where I feel like you punking me, then I'm gonna show my A. <laughs> and and. But Kimmy, you better than me. So Letitia's brother approached Kimmy. I could deal with the way that he approached Kimmy because he came with some brotherly love for his sister, but also making sure that y'all good. Yeah. So he was like, you know, you and my sister, y'all good. I done heard some things and whatever. And Kimmy was like, I assure you. We not, may not be where we were, but we good. Yeah, we good. You know, I it, still love her. I, and, yeah, and yeah, she loves me. We, we good. We good. <clears throat> Then Letitia's cousin Kiki, she came over there and made a complete A of herself. So she comes over there trying to check um, Kimmy about not having Letitia's back at the reunion. But Letitia was the one who told a lie at the reunion 
Kimmy was the one who told the truth, but Kiki figured that because you love Letitia so much, you should have had her back and it lied as too. well. Mm -mm. So then she, <laughs> Kimmy turned it around on Kiki and said, hold on. So do you actually think that we have never talked about Mel behind her back? Um, 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 well, yeah. She says, so how would you, how should I have answered that question? Mm -hmm. How should I have answered that question? Um, so you think I should have lied and told everybody that no, we've never talked about Mel behind her back because she decided to tell a lie on national TV. Hmm. And then she said what I always hmm. check people with. Have y'all had that conversation with her? Yeah. <laughs> because the way you jumping down yeah, my throat, yeah. as if I'm the one that did something wrong, have you checked them about lying? And until you do that, have a good day. <laughs> and make sure that you don't choke on nothing out here before I get to you again. But how, how, how do we get to a place where we feel like, feel like that if you my friend, you have to even lie for me, cheat for me, steal for me. You just... I don't get it. You 100% have to do you whatever... Do you a do girl. Yeah, you got to do whatever... You, boy. you got to do whatever it is that I need you to do to prove that you my friend. No what matter is, if it's... Where's the individuality late, in that? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I never... Yeah. Yeah. Nobody needs any clones walking around here. Like um, Marceau said, we don't need no minions around here. Now, I, now when we was in school, you know, it's a whole different. You're immature. You don't know what's happening. You just, you trying to figure life out. But once you get older and you realize that friendship is is not about you always getting your way or your friend always doing what you need them to do. But friendship is about you do for me. I do for you. I love you. You love me. I check you. You check, you check me. Yep. We be honest with each other. But I realized coming into this friendship that you're not going to meet my every need. And you shouldn't. Yeah, and you I shouldn't. That's that not responsibility on you. Yeah. And so that's how I think what happens is we do that to each other. I came in with this expectation that I was supposed to get this some kind of healing from our friendship. And then when you don't deliver it, then you're not being a good friend. Yeah. And we do that to spouses as well. Yeah. Like I come in with this big hold in my chest. Right. Or this hole in my heart. And I want you to fulfill everything that I'm lacking when I came to the table. And I didn't sign up for that. Yeah. I signed up to be this great companion, your help. But no, I can't fulfill any of that. But <laughs> as a good friend, I am willing to help you. And walk with you. Walk with you through it. But, a little while. Right. But don't expect for me to be your healer. Mm -mm. That's what a lot of people get in friendships and things. I'm yep. not I'm going not through sure. that right now, honey. Say God is your healer. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I'm your friend. <laughs> so here we go, right? Now back to what Marceau said. That he was going to plan <clears throat> to have this party on whatever day. That Wanda was, was going to be gone out of town. And this Negro did not lie. Nope. When I looked around and I said, Wanda really is not, not there. there. Oh, she's going to be pissed. He's. I seen Letitia's dad at Horace. I said, Horace, I know. I know that you are me on some horseshoes. <laughs> Man, oh, I know huh? at the cookout, don't horse look like he could keep your ass fact, in some horseshoes. Matter of fact, I bet she had the horseshoes in the back of his trunk. The horseshoe pole. Matter of fact, he gonna tell them, nah, we gotta take y'all set up. And because this put is my set. set. This, that, is, this is the set. Cornhole? Huh? <laughs> Man, I'm trying to tell you, Letitia's daddy look like every one of my great uncles. Mm -hmm. The air last one of them would kick your head. It's yep. horseshoes, spades, cornhole. And then if you let them on that grill, forget about it. Huh? Yeah. Forget about it. Food is gonna, never going to stop coming off that grill. Yep. I'm trying to tell you. Especially if they comb the hair backwards, you might as well forget it. <laughs> That's what gave it away. Uh -huh. You comb your hair backwards, boy. Oh, you the skit. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. When you get bold enough to slick that skit back like yep. that, use the man for me. I'm trying to tell you. Everybody got them in their family. Everybody it, got them in their family. Let me rephrase. Every black person <laughs> has them in their family. <laughs> and don't touch them. Right. Because whatever you need to be done, Oh, they there. Or oh, they know somebody. Yep. <laughs> oh, they know somebody. They know somebody. 
Uh, yes, sir. Ooh, so, uh, let's let's talk about cousin Bernard. Oh Lord, cause cause Stella got a cousin. Stella got a cousin that's young, but when he gets older, he's gonna look like cousin Bernard. And we sat here and we were in tears. I said, if you don't look at such and such, <laughs> that's gonna be him in the next fifteen years. Cause I mean. <laughs> That's how he looks at every occasion. Yep. Every occasion. So Cousin Bernard walks over there to where, or either Marceau walked over to where he was, I'm not sure. And Marceau wanted to know like, hey, how are you kin to Letitia again? I'm a Cousin Bernard. I helped raise her on the other on side, side of the, the tracks. tracks. So hang it on over the side, in the project. Hang it on the other side of the tracks again. I said, Ooh. Oh, here it go again. I said, Marceau, <laughs> you're going to have to stand up in this. You're going to uh. have to dig your feet down in the mud and just stand up because you said that skit and you knew that at some point when you was around the family that That's skit was going to come, come back, back up <laughs> because it did it made you look like you were judging them for being lesser than right real talk that's how it looked and they weren't happy about it and they want to let you know they weren't happy about it so next thing i know the entire family comes gathering around and i said they're gonna jump you <laughs> They could jump you. <laughs> the only way you can get out of this, you're going to have to play dominoes. You're going to have to beat them in dominoes. Yeah, you're going to have to rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the hell? So they, they got over there and whatnot. Marceau in the confessional talking about some, listen, I thought. I thought. <laughs> that that I, I left Wanda behind, but her spirit is here. Her presence is here through her minions. Through her minions. I said, <laughs> you can't say that like that around nobody family. And then get them all in one. That is power in numbers. Hmm. And they decided that that day they were going to check you and check you real good. So, Kimmy and Tisha. So, Kimmy let Tisha know, like, listen, I'm here on some support sister skit. I love you. And even Mel was there because she was like, they're trying to rebuild their relationship. And, you know, she wants to be there and be there for me. Everything was fine. Look, Sadark was there. <laughs> I said, Lord, y'all pray for some dark. I'm just going on. <laughs> but um, Kimmy was like, we good, Letitia, right? Like, we, we real good. I love you. So Letitia goes into the real issue that she has with Kimmy. It's not an issue with Kimmy. It's an issue with yourself. It's an issue, like my husband said, you came into this relationship and she said it i don't have sisters so i figured when you got married to maurice oh now i have that sister, sister. that i always mm -hmm. wanted right but you put something and a responsibility on kimmy that kimmy you never said enough for. she was in she a position to for fulfill for you right <laughs> she's your she is your sister she's been there for you she's a friend but Kimmy got her own skit. Mm -hmm. She has her own life. And she also can't be your yes woman. And she can't be your do girl. But she said, but I like that Kimmy admitted that they was the one that did that. Because she's spoiled. She's spoiled. Mm -hmm. And she Let said, we all, all built, we all made up this bed. And now we're sitting here looking at the bed like that's an ugly comforter. So you think basically she was saying basically over the years she's been wrong, but we never challenged her or told her she was wrong to protect her feelings. Uh, okay, I'm going to give it to you in an example that we all will understand. You have right. somebody in the family that never does right by their money. But every time they need something, they come to you. But the, but the amount is so small that you don't miss it by giving it to them. And you're like, okay, I'll give you this $20. I'll give you this $50. And it happens so much. Then one day they sit there and ask you, oh, can I borrow $1,500? Hold on, wait a minute, what? <laughs> and you're sitting there like, what is wrong with you? Why you ain't got your money together? Why your finances ain't together? It ain't been together for years, but you chose to ignore it mm -hmm. or not really deal with it because it was so, so small. small. Gotcha. And now it's bigger. And now it's a problem. But it's been a problem. So basically when the monster was a baby, we was fine. But now the monster's full grown. And we like, when the Grinch, <laughs> we like when the Grinch was little, everybody's like, oh, he's so cute with all the fur on his face. Uh -huh. And then when he got yeah. older and went up yeah. on the top of the mountain. Everybody's scared of him now. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I like, like you said, I like what Kimmy said. Listen, we we all played a part in it. She's spoiled, and she probably was coddled a little bit because she is the the girl in the family that everybody was like, oh, let me give her what she needs, give her what she wants because she's the girl. I understand because I was the only girl for a very long time in my family among all boys. Right. And my uncles did not let you do <clears throat> anything to me. And my mom would tell you to this day. Mm-hmm. My so they don't protect you from save a, my protect you from a minute a walking yes, boy. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> uh, so I understand it, and but at some point you got to stand up in your own skit and be an individual, mm -hmm. and just be like, okay, you know, it is what it is, and it's okay. It's not yeah. the end of the world. Yeah, because you're gonna be wrong sometime. Yep, probably a lot. <laughs> yep, because that is what life is. But yeah, um, that was pretty much Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think we're gonna be off to a, to a explosive season, and yeah, I think with the previews for next week. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna enjoy this season because maybe we won't be dealing with so much of the Mel and Martell crap, which pushed us away from the show in the beginning. Because I was like, I I I don't have time for that, but I will deal with a lot of spread out drama. I just, I just couldn't always deal with them and their <laughs> foolishness. But anyway, straight from yeah, the VA. The dirty, dirty sound. Two up. Two down. Holla! Boo!